Hello there students and welcome to this video which is all about a garden centre. The garden centre we're going to look at is Gordon Rig, which is a garden centre on Todmorden Road. Now this garden centre has asked us to create a little prototype system for them to show them a number of different things. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to allow us to create a structure record structure to hold products from the garden centre, be it plants to garden furniture. Two, it's going to count the number of records that we've got in our file, and it's going to check the quantities of stock in the file to a minimum reorder level. It's going to allow us to add a product into our file. It's going to display all of those products in the file into the list box or the data grid view. It's going to find a record at a specific location in the file. And it's worth pointing out here that all records sat inside the file start at the position of one. So if I put in number three there, it's going to produce the third record in the position of three in our file. Seven is going to find a product based on its product ID. So if my spider plant has a product ID of 123, if I type in 123, click the find product ID button, it's going to produce all the information for that plant. Eight, it's going to delete a record from the file and nine, it's going to update details of a record. So let me show you the front end of this system. We've got a number of different things here that allow us to interact with the user. The first thing to point out is the input section. We've got five different inputs that we're going to need from the user, such as the product ID, the description of the product, the price, the number of that product we've got in stock, and the minimum reorder level. We have an add record button, which is going to allow us to populate the record and pop it in the file. Moving further on, when the, when the form loads, we're going to have a number of products box here populated, and we can manually check the reorder level if we want to. We can display everything from the file using this list products button and it's going to populate this list box or this data grid view. And we decided to include a data grid view because not many students are used to using them. But it works on the premise of having rows and columns. We also have the LST display file which is our list box which is going to allow us to populate things in there row by row. Now it's worth pointing out as well that the font in this is Curry and New because it's a monotyped font which means all of the letters are equally spaced. But we're also going to use a string format in order to improve the look of that as well. In the search section, we have searching for record number when we click the button and searching for our product ID when we click the button. Whichever one we click, if we find it in our system, it's going to populate these five boxes with the information from the file. That allows me to update the record in the file or delete the record in the file. And the final thing is the hash button here. This is a hashing algorithm which will generate an index based on data. And we can put that into our system. If we get time, we will do. But if not, I'll show you how to generate an index anyway. And with a, with a little bit more work, this could easily be an A-level project. So let's get started then. The first thing I've got for you is the files itself. So the students would have downloaded the files, unzip the folder, and have this program open. And you can follow me through here and I'll guide you through it. So here's my front end all ready to go. Everything looks good to me. I've got my front end, which looks okay, and I've got the back end here. So in the code window, we're gonna start by creating a few variables first. And anything created underneath the public class is gonna be a global variable. And global means accessible outside the procedures or sub-procedures we've got. So I'm going to have in there as well the file name as a string. The file name is going to hold the file location or the name of the file so I can access it when I open it up. I'm also going to have in here the number of records and they are going to be of type short, which is a short integer, so short whole number. I'm also going to have um, a format which is going to be used inside my list box as well. So the way these work uh, we have these interesting looking curly brackets. I'm going to have five sets of those and they're surrounded by speech marks. So because I've got, I've got five variables to output here, such as the product ID and the description, the price, etc. The first one is going to be 
the product ID followed by a description. And what you'll see here is two parameters. Now what these are, are the firstly the variable itself, variable zero, variable one, variable two, variable three, variable four. So it's five in total. The minus means we're going to left align it and we've got five spaces in order to put our data in. This one's left aligned at 21 and then I've got, I'm going to have 10 on this one, 10 on this one and let's just say five for the reorder level shall we. And we'll come back to that later on when we implement our list. I'm also going to have the actual record number as an integer and I'm also going to have the current record that I'm looking at. And that will be useful a little bit later on for updating and deleting records. So once I've got those things, the next thing I need to do is create a record structure. Okay, that's our data structure that we're going to use for our files. Okay, so remember a file is a cluster of related records and a record is a cluster of related fields. So record structures also need names and they start off with the keyword structure. And I'm going to call my structure product type. And if successful, you press enter, the rest of the code will be generated for you. And inside structures, we declare our variables much the same as we did before. So I'll say dim product ID as a short. So short integer. I have also in there um, my dim description as a string. I'll also have my price as, we'll go with a decimal here because we're looking at floating point values and quantity in stock, use camel case there, as a short integer. And then we also have the reorder level itself. Okay, now, made a little case. So if you think about it now, um, what is my total size of my record? So when I populate one record, shorts have two bytes. Description, hmm, I'm not quite sure of that one yet because a string can be as large as we like. I'll also have uh, oh, decimal is not two bytes. Decimal is 16 bytes. We also have two bytes here for that. And reorder level as short. That's two bytes as well. There we go. Now, the string's quite interesting. When you have a record, we're going to slice up the file in the specific size of a product type structure. So my product type structure currently has 16 plus the four, so that's 22, okay? Now my description, how large would that be? I'll go with something just to make this nice and simple to work with. I'm gonna go with 18. So it's gonna be 40 in total because I'm gonna have the 18 from the description plus the two there, that's 20 plus the 16, plus the four, that gives us 40 bytes in total. So that's what I'm gonna aim for, 40 bytes in total. Yours can be whatever size you like, but when you create records, if you're doing it like I'm doing it with fixed strings or fixed record lengths, I'm gonna also add in here VB fixed string. And that's gonna make sure that whatever happens when somebody types this in, types the description in, it's going to be set to, or to a predetermined size. So if I put in there 16 characters to describe my house plan, for example, um, what's gonna happen is it's gonna pad out two more characters. And that's it's quite important that when we actually build our, fi our file. So we'll look at this a little bit in a little bit more detail later on. So I've created my structure there. I've got all my variables that I need, all my fields in there, and I'm happy to move on now. So the first thing I'd like to do really with my program is double click on it and I produce a load event. So form one underscore load. 
And there's a number of things that I'd like to do when we load up this form. The first thing would be to declare a pointer to the structure itself. And what that means is dim one product. This is this looks immediately like a variable would do. So declared it first with dim and I'll say as and then I'm ready to declare my data type. Now in this case, because I'm creating a pointer to the structure, my data type would be the product type. Now I've got a green line there, which means I've not used the memory in that. So if I put one product and if I put, if I put a full stop, I've got access to all of the fields inside that I've just created up there, such as the product ID and the description and the price and the quantity in stock. So I could populate the description if I wanted to. I could just assign it a string houseplant. Okay, and that's how you populate fields inside a record, but I don't want to do that yet. I'm going to create the, the file name. So the file we're going to use, I'm going to call it products. And I'll show you the default location of all of your files. So there's my file name variable. I'm going to assign it the products for the products file. And this is going to be a .dat file. It's just going to hold some data. You can feel free to use txt or something like that. It'll work much the same. Uh, excellent. So when I say the bin folder, what I'm actually talking about is, I'll just get this up here. This is my, my files for my project. If I double click that, I go inside random access, which is the name of this project. I go inside the bin folder, into debug. This is where my file is. So I've already got a products file in there pre-populated because I've done this before. So here's my file there. And that's how you access it. Now, if I don't have a file there, I need to make sure that a file is created. So standard file handling, we have three steps. Step one, we open the file. Step two, we do something with the file. Could be anything, it could be looping through it, could be reading to it, could be writing to it. Then we have the third final step, which is close the file. I always forget that. But the program often shouts at me if I've done something wrong. So here we are. We'll start with the keyword file open. And we've got a series of parameters, seven in total. So the first parameter is the channel of my file. So what am I going to connect to? When I've got a channel open, nobody else can access that channel apart from me if I've got it open. So if I leave it open by accident, I'm not actually going to get access to it. I'm not only going to be allowed to edit it in the future. The system will shout at me. So it's always important to close your files. Next thing I have is the file name in there, followed by the mode that I want to open it in. Okay, so I'm gonna open mode and I'm gonna use random for this. So that means I can open it anywhere. Then I've got parameter four, five, and six, which are gonna be blank. So these, you can see there, the system's trying to tell me what they are. This one is the access, open access, and then I've got the open share, and then here I've got the record length. So how long is the record? And it's the length of one product, which we've just worked out is 40 bytes in total. So when it opens the file, it opens it in 40 byte chunks. So these parameters, we just leave them blank because we don't really use them. I don't think I ever have used them to be honest. So parameter one is the channel. Parameter two is the file name. Parameter three is the mode you want to open it in. Channel four, uh, sorry, parameter four, five and six, we don't need. And then parameter seven is the record length. 
So what, the, what will happen is the program will run this and if there's no file there, it will create one using the file name and it will create it in 40 byte chunks. So once I've opened the file, what I'm going to do, I'm going to calculate the number of records in the file. So let's say we had a file of 100 bytes and every record in the file was 10 bytes in length. You take the file, the total file size and divide it by an, by one file and that will give you the number of records in there. So if I say number of record, did I call it number of record? Let's call it number of records. So makes more sense that doesn't it? Number of records equals LOF which is the length of the file. Now which file are we referring to? We're referring to the channel 1 because we've got that open. That's the connection that we've got with the file. And we divide that by the length of one product. So that's 40 bytes in total. So whatever the size of my file is, divided by 40. Okay. From there, I just need to display that now. Now where I'm going to display that, display number of records, I'm going to display it in this box here. And that's called TXT display products in file. So if I put TXT display products in file dot text, what I can do then is say assign that the value of number of records. And then finally, the last step of my file handling process is file close and which channel do I want to close down? That's channel one. Excellent. There we go. Now if I run this, you've already got a pre-populated file, or I have at least. So what that's going to do, it's going to run the file, and it's going to pre-populate the box, and three goes in there, because I've got three products in my file. And if I check that out, just to make sure, product, I've got a product called Stuff, a product called Another Thing, and a product called Monkey Puzzle Tree. So three in total. So that looks right to me. All of these strange symbols, don't worry about that. That's the numbers being converted in random mode. So when we convert this back, it will all be changed back to normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop there and this will be the end of the first part. And I'm going to do that to try and keep the video lens down to something quite manageable. So join me in the next one where we'll carry on with the garden centre project.